<laughs> Hi. Hi, hi, hi! I'm live again from the comfort of my home. I hope you can see me or hear me fine. Just let me know if like there's a sound problem or anything, then I will try to fix it right away. So in today's Hi Carleen. Thank you for joining us today. Um today we're gonna talk about um how to hammer wire paddles. Um I just wanna are you having problems uh with hammering your wire straight? Uh maybe your cur uh, your wire tend to curve uh in a on one side while you start with the, your wire straight. So today we're, I'm going to share some techniques to make sure that your wire stays straight. And uh, I will demonstrate how to hammer the wire with my planishing hammer and my uh, ball peen hammer. So you can use whatever hammer uh, you have. I will also demonstrate uh, using my Coltsmith hammer, which if you uh, notice, maybe if it would say, try to focus on the hammer. Okay. If you can see here, uh, the planishing hammer has a slightly rounded face well, the goldsmith hammer has a straight face. Hope that's uh, that's super clear on the camera here. So generally, I like to uh, hammer wire with the planishing hammer because the uh, gently rounded face here uh, leaves less mark tools, uh, tool marks. Uh, leaves less tool marks on the wire compared to if you're using a completely straight uh, face like the goldsmith hammer but it can be done uh, before I have this planishing hammer uh, I use my goldsmith hammer a lot like super a lot and it can be done only you have to be uh, more gentle about it Hi L, hi Shai, hi D. Nice of you of joining us today. And I also want to say that I welcome any constructive crit criticism. Like you can comment. Uh, I welcome any comments, good or bad. I just want to make sure that if you have something to say that is like maybe you think my video isn't good enough or whatever uh, or whatever. Make sure that it is constructive so I can uh, be better next time. Uh, because like this morning I received uh, this comment, someone said that on one of my videos, a very bad explanation. And that's it. Like, I'm not sure like how to go from that, like uh, she didn't give me anything to go off of that so I can't help her and she didn't help me understand her so if you have anything to say if it's like you think my video isn't good enough uh, make sure you uh, elaborate because like just saying like very bad explanation there I say it's a very bad uh, comment because uh, yeah, it doesn't give me anything. Like, I'm not mad or anything about it. I'm just confused. Like, what what was what was wrong with the video? Like, uh, did I skip a step or you know? So I I can't help her to understand my video and because she didn't give me anything to uh, be understood. So help me to help you if you have 
anything you're confused about something just ask me because I'm generally a nice person I will try to answer your questions uh, especially if it's related to the video or jewelry making I will always try to answer if I know the answer if not uh, I will say it uh, truthfully if I am not too experienced or something you can find the info somewhere else you know something like that so I just want to make sure if you have something to say make it constructive because I want to build a constructive a constructive and positive community in my channel so so I hope we can help each other uh, instead of tearing each other down okay so that's what I want to say and I like this quote by uh, my business mentor uh, Melissa Camillary she always say we rise by lifting others and I agree with her uh, that's why I do this free videos I'm not here for the money in, uh, despite what some people think because honestly I don't get that much money from YouTube even if I had the monetization on it's like after all, like all of you like watch me this past uh, what, uh, one a week and a half I only get like twelve dollars <laughs> that's it like and like I told you I, I, I'm not here for the money like money from monetization on YouTube is like laughable unless you have like a million views or something like that then you start making serious money if you just like me uh, like a really small channel with a few hundred or a few thousand views on each video it's really nothing to go on about so I like sharing what I do and I'm passionate about my jewelry and I just like to pay it forward because truthfully I received a lot of free uh, information back when I just started so now I'm just like passing it on uh, to you guys so yeah uh, hi Namir nice to see you here again um, okay let's just get started with uh, hammering wire you can use any type of wire you want uh, right now I'm just gonna use copper uh, you know because copper is cheap uh, and it's a nice metal to work with you can use silver you can use gold if uh, I don't think if you're uh, already working with gold I don't think you'd be in my channel but <laughs> who knows <laughs> Uh, so yeah you can use any wire you want any cage you want I'm just here to show you the technique uh, of hammering so you can get uh, fairly straight paddles okay, let me focus the camera on my uh, steel block here Such as the wire that I had uh, from the demo the other day about balling wire. If you haven't watched that and you're interested too, it's up in my channel. Okay, um, first, if you want to have a nice and smooth looking paddle you want to like file it first it can be either way um, it can be done either way like, you can shape the wire before or after the paddles are made but generally I like to at least make the wire flush not having that uh, diagonal cut over there this is just from the back of my uh, cutter Oops, something fell. Uh, okay, at least I'm going to snip up that part first. And I'm going to show you first, I'm going to file this the end of the wire here. Uh, by the way, if 
you want some inspiration of paddle uh you can use paddles for jewelry obviously otherwise like uh we're not here because uh there is a this american sculptor and artist called alexander caldere and he he is the like pioneer of the hanging mobile and he also made jewelry and his jewelry has a lot of petal petals and uh hammered uh spirals on them and he can move metal like crazy they like, can spread it like really really thin just check him out uh, he's he's really inspiring so anyway, I have rounded the end of my wire here. You can also use a... Why is it not focusing? It's too small, I guess. You can use... You can use a copper if you have a drill or a flex shaft, but uh, you can use like a hand hand drill, not hand drill. What is it called? Uh, something like this. Uh, this is just a handheld vice. I think that's what it's called. And you can use. Uh, this on a handheld vise, this is a cup for this is to round the end of the wire I wouldn't suggest, uh, I wouldn't use like a regular drill because regular drill shakes a lot it, it just doesn't really work, I've tried it before before I had my flex shaft but if you had, like this is best if you use a flex shaft because then it would uh, it would work a lot faster and it doesn't shake so you can like have it uh, fall up really nicely like so but now I'm just gonna show you the manual way um D coffee ask is it coffee um uh, excuse me uh what size steel blocks do you suggest uh, beginning with uh, any size any size you have really uh, I I have a lot of steel blocks this one is just a small one this is a like a two by two inch or two and a half by two and a half inch still block from Hobby Lobby believe it or not and these work just fine I, I use this a lot before I cut this huge uh, steel block here this huge steel block I cut from someone man I I wasn't prepared to have this kind of answer I forgot who I bought it from I think he was named Keith I could be wrong but I don't remember his last name but anyway you can use any size you want this size it works just fine especially if you make small stuff you can like uh, even if you make like big stuff like i do like uh, your curves or wire is like small so having the size of steel block it works perfectly fine the only one downside of this steel block because it's so cheap at Hobby Lobby especially if you have the 40 percent off coupon uh, the surface has a little bit of texture I'm not sure if you can see it on the camera here but it has like kind of like a brush texture so what I did was I I sand the surface you know have like sandpaper on a surface and do a circling or figure 
figure of eight motion so I make sure that it is uh, sanded flat so I think I started from like 120 and then go uh, sm finer and finer like 120 maybe and then like three uh, what is after 120 uh, brain blank one 120 150 and then like maybe like 200 and then 220 like then then 320 and then 400 and then just go finer and finer and and then you can go even finer with the uh, sandpaper that you can find at uh, automotive automotive uh, shop they go as fine as like a one of fifteen hundred grit or up to like three thousand grit, but that only if you want like a super shiny surface. You don't really need to if you don't want, but you know some people like shiny surface on their steel block, so that you just need to go finer and finer like a, a gradually. You cannot go from one twenty and then like fifteen hundred then you will get like a shiny but texture so to remove the texture you want to go finer gradually like that it takes a lot of time especially if you don't have like a machine grinder if you have a machine grinder then it would go a lot faster but yeah that's like I have the small one I also have a 4x4 four steel plug and I also have my uh, train track blo uh, block there on the ground uh, not sure if you can see it it's super dark my light is not shining on it and somewhere there that's a train track steel plug So yeah, you can use basically anything you want. Size doesn't really matter. So let's try working on this thing. Zoom in. There we go. So, uh, to recap, this one I already uh, file it, right? Make sure it's kind of rounded a little bit. Maybe kind of can see it. Maybe if I have my... Uh, let's try it. Let's have, uh, this is just uh, the lens of my optivisor. See if this would help. Mm. Maybe, maybe not. Eh, I guess not. Okay, doesn't work. Well, anyway, I just want to say once again that um, I don't like using a chasing hammer. If you've watched my previous video, you know that I don't prefer chasing hammer for hammering wire because of the difference of the face. Chasing hammer is just way too have way too big of a face and you can't be precise about it because most of your wire will be covered by the face of the hammer right while using like a, something small like this or the goldsmith hammer uh, you can see most of the wire so this way you can uh, have a better hammer control which is what we're trying to learn today is, is, is hammer control so, yeah, use a planishing hammer or a goldsmith hammer or any hammer that has a small face. 
preferably that smooth face because I'm cheap hammer can have like kind of rough face but that's okay if you want your uh, petal to be textured then using a rough faced hammer is fine too so this is what we're gonna do we're gonna start from the end and so this is just a I think this is like 14 gauge wire hopefully it shows alright on camera so what you need to know is that uh, we have a tendency of hammering uh, like our hammer would be like a slightly tilted that is just like a what we probably if we don't know how to hammer yet probably you guys are gonna hammer in the same way and that that could cause your uh, paddle to curve once you learn how to control your hammer you will be able to have a straight uh, result every time so let me see if I can make this curve so maybe like if you're just uh, hammering just along the top right so and then your hammer uh, your wires start to curve because you're only hammering on one side so what I want you to uh, learn is to be aware how you hammer your wire like if you have a tendency to curve like one way maybe like it's curved down or curved up so then you want to move your hammer to the other side to make it balance so now we're hammering like on the opposite side and then you get a straight uh, result it's no longer curved maybe it's easier if I use a thicker hammer like a uh, thicker wire I mean first you want to make sure that your wire is straight right just uh, kind of roll it around and hammer it and you can also use two two steel block and kind of like a roll it like that to make sure that it is straight if it's rolling then it's straight if it's like stuck then it's not straight that's how you uh, indicate that so let's try uh, I'll try to make this ha uh, wire curve is this the closest it gets? okay no this is the closest see uh, maybe like if I hammer from the side you'll be able to see like here I only my hammer strikes mostly on the top right so and then you get like a, this wonky shape I mean it's kind of hard but once you know how it's kind of hard to uh, you know hammer the wrong way but you can see it's kind of wonky like it's 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 more curved right here than it is over here and that's because I I hammer mostly on the on this side and so you want to make sure that your hammer you're hammering like right in the middle of it not not like so you know but right in the middle and once you get like something wonky like that it's still fixable you just have to like 
hammer it the same way on the other side and you can kind of like move your wire to the uh, your hammer to the opposite side and try to make it even so with a few simple strokes kind of make it uh, similar left and right here hope you can see it fine so if we're hammering uh, you want to go gently like I said like everything should be uh, start on the wrist it's more like a wrist movement if you haven't seen my previous video I mentioned that everything should be on the wrist like so not moving your whole arm like this right just the wrist and make sure that your shoulder is relaxed that your hammering surface is you know around your waist area not above it if your hammering surface is above your waist area then you kind of have the tendency to raise your shoulder um, so like if your hammering area is like right here and then you have like you have to do that no that is that is not good that it that will hurt you in the long run like maybe it's just a even like a sh short amount of hammering like a 30 minutes or whatever you will get like knots and you know stiff neck or whatever so you want to make sure your hammering surface is right on your around your waist area so your uh, elbow and shoulders stay relaxed and not raised like that this is wrong okay this is wrong you want to, your shoulder to be straight and only moving your wrist Okay, let's go back to the thing again, zoom in. So let's try to flare uh, the tip out, out here. So you want to focus, if you want the, to flare out on the tip here, uh, your focus of hammering should be on the tip not in the middle you know you start from the end this this one I started from the middle because I want to show you that you know some people get the wire curved and they were they are wondering why so that's why I did it on the middle but now let's try to make a paddle and you start from the end and if you want you can also shape it after it's kind of flat like this that's right I didn't shape this this was just snipped uh, straight now I'll try to snip it by uh, not snip it. I will try to curve it a little bit round it so you get a nicer looking petal Okay, it's slightly rounded now, and let's try to make a pad hole. Let's see. Which way is better? This way? So make sure you don't hit your fingers, okay? <laughs> So this is like you're focusing on the on the end. Uh, as you can see, after I shape it a little uh, rounded, now you automatically automatically get a rounded petal. So. Hope you can see my hammer movement. If 
because it has a slightly rounded uh, face I like to move it sometimes like this sometimes like that to balance it out so you don't want to just move it just this way and not doing this way because that's that what makes your wire curve if you just hit it from one side repeatedly so I want you to uh, observe my hammer movement here and I also work on uh, the area like a one side like I check it often if I see it slightly curving then on one side then I want to hammer on the opposite side so by by being mindful once again like I always say that you have to be mindful of what you're working on so you're not uh, you know get a lot of accidents so once you uh, train your mind to be mindful and check it often enough then you will see your mistake right away and you will have a chance to fix it before it goes on for you know too long and you ruin your piece so it's like just lightly tap every time because if you have like a strong strong uh you know hammering strikes then you will flatten it too too fast and there is a big chance that you cannot control that uh the shape if you're like hammering way 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 too hard so you want like a control tap 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 Also, once you while well, you're hammering, make sure that you pay attention to your body, because you know, like I noticed that I like some uh, sometimes like uh, involuntarily, like my shoulder goes up, and when that happens, I like to remind myself to relax my shoulder, so I don't hurt my, I don't injure my body. And basically, once that happens, you like uh, make sure you fix your posture and hammering straight, not you know a uh, hunchback and stuff like that. So that is the result of our lightly tap 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 tap, and you focus on the area where you want it to be uh, the largest and the rest is just like a softly tap it to make it taper let me know if my explanation is good enough and if you need me to repeat something I will gladly to So this is not like the end of it. You can still make it bigger. Like if you, like I say, if you uh, search for Alexander Calder, that is like C A L D E R, and Alexander is just Alexander with an X, and he can like make huge paddle just from like hammering his wires. Let's try to make something that looks like more like a calder uh, petals.
Okay, the ad is like a, a lot bigger now than it was before. And sometimes you can benefit from annealing to make the metal soft again and then you can spread the metal better because sometimes like uh, after a while the metal becomes too hard and annealing with the help of annealing you can spread the metal uh, wider and after you're hammering the wire you might like uh, see like this like some kind of like bumps not really smooth but you aspire to have a smooth looking paddle well this is not the end of the world you have your files and you can you can file uh, and shape it however you want does it, it doesn't have to stop here to say like uh, let's see if we can uh, I'll try to hammer it a little bit so it's not as uh, bumpy slightly better okay let's try to shape it uh, with the file if you want a little uh, to keep the rusty uh, not rusty rustic uh, look then you don't have to file but sometimes you want something to look more refined then you can shape your paddle by filing it. That's a more refined looking paddle. Hope it shows well on camera. I have a question. Do you think the quality of the picture is better or not? Because uh, I think yesterday I found out that the resolution was a little low uh, for the past week. So I tried to increase it, but I'm not sure if it's working or not. I think it says that it is now 1280 uh, this is better than yesterday supposedly okay so if you want to decorate your petal uh, you can do it after like you cut the shape that you want and then you can proceed to uh, making a texture on it like a maybe you want like a ball texture you can use your ball pin once again like you want to make sure that you can you're not focused on just one side but make sure that you do your hammering on both sides at the same time so it's not a uh, curve to one side
So with the ball pin hammer, like it kind of make it rustic again because uh, the ball part of the hammer which is a uh, kind of spread the metal again but you can file it again or you can have like a bark texture using a cross pin hammer hmm. down so that's a bark texture from a cross pin hammer obviously you will need to shape this part again but well that's uh, two ways to texture your piece and check it out we kind of like a spread it spread the petal, uh, the wire here really, really big. Is it like confused or something? Okay. That's the... So from... I think this is I think this is twelve gauge. So you can definitely spread it to like really really thin and it's still strong enough. I try to bend it right here. It's still quite strong. Uh, Elsa, I noticed a difference in the resolution. It looks a lot more clear. Okay, that's cool. Um, I will make sure that to check the resolution again uh, next time to make sure that it keeps the good resolution. So what if you just have a, a ball pin hammer? Can you make a petal? Uh, the answer is yes. Although it, it is like a, a lot more challenging if you use a, a ball side of the hammer because you know the small surface there is like a bigger chance that you're wire will get curved so it is a well the like better work it's a challenge so let's try first you focus on the end because you want to make a pattern And with this uh, ball hammer, you definitely want to make sure that you go on both sides at all times. So, see if your hammer is like curving down, that means that you hammer too much on the top. So then you want to make sure that you hammer the bottom part. And the opposite way, if your hammer is curving to the top, then that means you hammering too much uh, on the bottom side of the hem of the wire. So you want to keep a good balance between uh, top and bottom or left and right depends on like you hammer it like this way or this way.
But all in all, it's much more efficient if you use a planishing ham hammer first or, you know, like what with the wider flat face than using this because with this uh, ball peen hammer then you only like uh, spread it like one tiny uh, one tiny surface at a time while this one you spread the metal faster because there is like more uh, surface to the hammer so generally I would suggest you use the planishing hammer first and then you can texture it with your uh, ball peen hammer but if you only have a ball peen hammer then it's okay too like uh, you can just use the ball part or you can use the the face of the ball peen hammer but uh, I guess it depends like what kind of a face of a ball peen hammer that you have like you can also use uh, the flat face uh, hammer like this one this one doesn't really uh, have a lot of movement like the this one and with the flat face it is easier to mark your wire with the you know, if I can show you here See if you if you hold it a little too to the side like this, then you get uh, those marks. You, I hope you can see it. Maybe if I turn off. Nope. It's a lot. Wait, no. Yes. So you can see uh, these marks. So that's the thing with a flat face hammer. You have to make sure that you are like super flat while you're hammering your wire. If you're just if you uh, have a tendency to lean to one side, then the edge will mark your wire. That's why a rounded face is better. Because even if you're kind of like leaning to one side, it's still not touching the edge, like the flat face hammer. But it's still doable, only like a, the rounded face hammer uh, spread the metal better than a flat face. Uh, better? How do I explain it better? Um, because like if you're like a kneading, kneading a dough, like Sometimes like uh, like you use your fist and it will push it uh, farther or deeper than if you use your uh, palm. So that's kind of like a, a way to see it. Uh, the rounded face will spread it better. But a round face would actually make a dimple instead of, you know, spreading it. So the best hammer to use is a planishing hammer with slightly rounded face. Like you can use any wire, just uh, any hammer, just this one is the most effective. That's what I'm trying to say. flat face works only it might leave some uh, unwanted marks and slower uh, hammering
time, like longer hammering time. The same with the uh, with the ball pin, you 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 will hammer it longer, and there is a greater risk of curving the wire. So let's see how far we can stretch this. Probably not too far. This is already already slightly bendier. Now this is what happens when you don't uh, you don't bother to shape your wire first. It will have uh, like a flat top because this is just a straight cut. So if you rounded it first before you shape it, then it will uh, leave you a nice already rounded uh, shape well this one uh, you can file it now to make it rounded but some uh, you can do uh, whatever you want it's just like a depends which one you are more comfortable with like are you more comfortable with shaping already like a wider shape like that or are you more comfortable uh, shaping it before when it's like a still small uh, in a wider shape so like usual then you will want to uh, sand the edges if you're done with the filing to make sure you get a nice smooth ed uh, edge all around it so there you have it and you can do a lot of things with petals it doesn't have to be just dangles. You can actually turn it into a bail if you want. Uh, let me show you. I use, I will use my bail looping pliers and it will be easier if you anneal it first. So let me anneal this and I'll come back. Okay, let's try to make a bail with this uh, petal here that I already annealed first. So it depends on what size of your chain. Uh, then you use the corresponding uh, bail looping uh, the step that you want like uh, maybe if you use like a three millimeter chain then you probably want to go at least this big and if you use like a two millimeter uh, round leather cord then you probably will be fine with this one let's try with this one it can actually create a really interesting uh, effect kind of like a pastry like a croissant probably say croissant wrong but you know I'm not French 
So one in in the middle. Mm. So it looks like that. It looks it makes a really cool looking bale. It's simple to make but it has extra something to look at, you know, it's not just a loop. So that's one thing that you can use your paddle. Uh, four, I guess, yeah. You use the paddle for it. There you go. And then you can just put a cord, insert a cord around it, and you'll get, oh, insert the cord in it. Um, so, there you can insert a cord and then hang it from there so it's simple and but it looks really cute I think so what do you think of that now let's try to make a hammer circle unless you want me to go over this uh, hammering a paddle again. Let me know in the chat if uh, my explanation so far is uh, digestible. Do you think you can um, repeat it at home? So I am going to I because I like my circle to be a smooth circle I like to make the end uh, I like to cut the end diagonally like that and then I will burnish it to remove the pinch I might file a little bit so it's so it's nice and smooth okay, so now I am going to make a spiral So if you make, if you cut the end of a wire diagonally first, then you get really smooth looking spiral. So if, if you just have the end straight cut like that, the spiral won't be as good. Let's try it here. kind of not as nice looking as the other one it's hard to hold so this is why I like to diagonally cut my wire first so it can make a tighter spiral Uh, I'll say I'm going to try using this technique on an earring pattern that I have planned. Very cool. Well, share it with us if you do it, L. Like maybe share it in my Facebook group. Would love to see it. So let's try 
uh, spread this kind of like the Alexander Calter style So just, just a few simple hammering, it's already spreading really well, but you can push it further to make it like super wide and interesting. Because it's so small, it's kind of hard to hold it to make it even. But that is fine. Uh, we can anneal it later and push them together to make a tighter curl. This is the Alexander Calder inspired spiral. It's kind of nice looking because the really spread out metal looks really interesting to me. How to hold it better? So show it better on camera. I think that's in focus. Yes. I think hammering is super fun. It's uh, one of my favorite things to do. It's just like uh, you know, a lot of people think it's therapeutic because you know, if you're like feeling angry or whatever, you want to release it by hammering. But I wouldn't suggest you make jewelry while you're upset because I can't imagine the result would be really good if your mind isn't into it. But if you have metal and you have hammer, uh, you can basically maybe like making a texture uh, sheet to use later and just kind of like hammering it. Bang, 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 bang. At least you have an outlet, you know. I personally don't make jewelry when I'm upset. I will probably just, you know, playing games or watching Netflix. Because I only make jewelry when I am in my best mood. That's that way. Uh, I think I, I can infuse positivity and a little bit of happiness into my pieces. And I think it shows, especially if you make like whimsical jewelry like me. I don't think that the feeling transfers well into whimsical if you're making it while you're upset. So to make this kind of shape, uh, you concentrate your hammer on the other side here and not so much on the back. So pick a focus uh, which way, uh, which part you want to spread out most, then you want to hammer th those areas uh, a lot more. I think that's just a I think it's pretty strong, but it might get caught. If it get caught, it might bend. 
So if it was me, I wouldn't make the element just like this. I probably either like a uh, solder the join over here so it cannot move like that because it eventually it eventually will you know like beyond fixing if it's if it continues so I probably want to at least have a solder joint over there or if I made the curl not as tight I can wire wrap it to close it so that is just uh, just me the way I like to send my jewelry is I want to make sure that the customer cannot uh, accidentally uh, change the shape you know so I like to avoid as many accidents as possible obviously like something just happened but you know if you can prevent it then prevent it not don't send it send like a I guess uh, what is it like a sub quality because I like my jewelry to last a lifetime if possible or four generations and as per usual I will uh, sand it to make the shape look nicer and not rough I would generally send it before I solder a piece. So that's about it. So let me know what, what kind of things you want me to demonstrate uh, tonight before I end this episode. Let me know in the comment or chat right here. Hey, I just noticed it. It it actually looks like my uh, subscribe button on my video. If you can see it on the right hand side, the the red spiral kind of looks similar. That's funny. <laughs> While you're looking at the subscribe button, well, subscribe to my channel. Do you need to? Do you need me to go over anything uh, once again, or do you need? Uh, let ask me in the chat uh, before I end the session. If I get no. Uh, no more question then I will end this uh, episode on this note and we'll see you tomorrow I'll see you again tomorrow uh, LS what was the name of your Facebook group again uh, it's Popnicute VIP it was originally a group that I created for my uh, buyers but it seems like now it evolves into my tutorial group so I will open a different one for my buyers <laughs> and keep this group for my uh, tutorials and uh, my watchers if you want to share your jewelry that you make based on my tutorials Okay, it doesn't seem like I receive any any more questions in the chat. I want to make sure I read my note if I No, I think I, I I've said everything. So Oh. Mm -hmm.
I'm going to point this to my face again. Hi! It's me again. <laughs> so, I hope that tonight's uh, episode of hammering has been good for you. Um, I think we made some pretty interesting stuff. I really like this little spiral here. So I'll see you tomorrow. We're going to... I actually haven't decided yet. Mm. It's either we make Okay, maybe tomorrow I'll I'll demonstrate how to make uh, the small moon crater. How to hammer the small moon crater uh, earrings, like just like my bracelet, the moon crater bracelet, the copper pipe bracelet, but it's made out of like four or three millimeters in diameter tubing so it's small tubing like that doesn't want to focus it is it that hard to focus on my tubing there you go. Ha. Ah. So, tomorrow I'm going to demonstrate how you create the moon crater uh, texture on this small tubing. Sounds good? Oh, uh, well, I'll see you tomorrow. Thank you for watching and subscribe if you haven't yet because I am no longer uh, announcing my uh, live video on Facebook groups so unless it's my group and one other group that's called Metal Smithing 101 and that's about it so make sure you subscribe so you get the notification when I'm live or you know set a timer on your phone or uh, join my group Popnicute VIP Pop Me Cute Jewelry VIP. There you go. Just search Pop Me Cute and I'm sure it will pop up. And I will try to link it in the description so you can join it to like a direct link to it. Well, I'll see you guys tomorrow. Thank you for watching and thank you for chatting with me. Bye! Mwah.